Hello geeks and gamers, Matt Lemke here with True Gamer Goggles and today we have another flip through for you. This one is the Pathfinder campaign setting uh, which is the Inner Sea Codex. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that this uh, book is not quite as universal as the hardback NPC Codex. Uh, it, it is every bit as good for GMs as the first book is. Uh, it's a little. I think it's geared a little more for GMs than just you know players. Whereas the other book, I believe, is balanced a lot more for uh, both. Uh, zooming in a little bit here for you, right on the back of the cover is a character index with page number, uh, the races. It's all alphabetized. Tells you everything that's in here. Tells you their class. So it's like a quick reference for you. Uh, page two pretty much puts this book in perspective for you. Uh, this is a world of characters and it tells you on these pages that the book is basically designed with uh, the flavor in mind to aid GMs for the gaming world of Galarian. Uh, it's pretty much a standalone book. All the abilities are included in the stat block or in the appendix or right here and if you need any other resources they tell you where to get them here but it also tells you Many of the characters in this book utilize rules content unique to the Pathfinder campaign setting that is not included in the setting neutral reference document available at paizo.com. Uh, where was... And it goes on and it tells you a little bit more information about how to find all of the stuff in this book. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do a real quick flip through. We're going to flip through the whole book. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can get a, 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 a basic look at some of the stuff in the book. And we're going to stop at a couple of pages. Uh, we have an Aldari Sword Lord. We have Anaphexia Agents. We have uh, the Arc Lord of Nex, which is uh, one of the things that I think is a little bit more unique in the book. And I'm going to pause for a second. And I'm going to kill a light. What I wanted to touch on is that this is one of the examples of the characters in the book that has pretty much everything in their stat block right in with the character. And, you know, there's a good deal of, in, in this case, the history or background information for the Ark Lord of Nex starts here and continues through all the way over to the bottom of uh, page 7. Well, actually, it's the top of the art at page seven, some of the things that I, you know, I thought were unique and cool about this is um, this book lists the sources where you can find the uh, concept behind the character classes. For example, uh, Arc Lord of Nexus Pathfinder Campaign Setting Paths of Prestige uh, Six. So, you know, and then you know, obviously you've got things like well, uh, the Arcane Lord of Nex has uh, an ability. That's a spell-like ability. The Arc Lord of Nex can expend one use of her her hand of the Apprentice ability to use Artifice Domains, Artifice or Touch Power as a 15th level cleric. Yeah, so there's some definite interesting things here. And you know, obviously you get your stat block with everything, and you get a basic section for the combat gear, just like you do in the NPC codex. Uh, now, and I mean there is a lot of stuff in this book. And, you know, I can't, I, we can't cover it all. Uh, you know, you've got the Aspis Consortium Commanders and the Aspis Consortium Spy. Uh, you now we're going to flip through here and we're going to hit on the ones that kind of struck my fancy. So we're just going to flip through, keep going. Uh, you know, there's, some, there's a lot of things that give flavor to a story, like uh, an opera singer. Uh, some snipers, cipher mage, and one that I liked because again, it's another one that has a lot of stuff that's built right into the stat block. Is the dagger mark poisoner? Uh, dagger mark poisoners are from the Pathfinder campaign setting, passive prestige, uh, eighteen, uh, and poisoner is from the Pathfinder RPG Advanced Players Guide, page one thirty four. Uh, it's a CR seven, and it's a Rogue Poisoner and a Dagger Mark Poisoner, five, you know, levels five and three. It, but what I, I found interesting was all the different 
special abilities that they have for poisoning. I've never seen a dagger mark poisoner before, so I thought it was kind of neat and interesting. It, it, it's kind of an interesting path. And then we have uh, Draw Matron, which pretty straightforward, uh, Devil's Perch Rebel. Uh, we have a Slaver. We have a Demon Hunter. First Guards of Absalom, Geb Bloodlord. Uh, a God Caller, which actually there's quite a bit of information on the God Caller. Uh, you know, I mean, quite a bit of information. Like a page and a half of it is text about the background of it. You've got the Grey Gardeners, the Grey Maiden, uh, which is a pretty cool picture. I like that mask. Uh, it's uh, actually kind of inspiring for a character that I'm already playing. And actually, I like the... Uh, it's not really a mask, it's a hat and a cloak idea, but I think I'm going to make a mask similar to that for a character I'm already playing. Well, the same character, actually. He's got a, a fetish for masks. Uh, and we have the uh, Harbringer, and we have a Harrower. And then we move into um, Hell Knights. And uh, the Hell, well, the whole Hell Knight line, basically. Uh, I'm going to zoom in because uh, I look at these pictures and I would not have gathered that these guys were lawful. I would have thought for sure they were like chaotic, uh, evilish, uh, you know, and they, they, they stand for something that's pretty good, or well, they stand for law and order for the most part. And uh, the first two NPCs are lawful neutral, and the signifier is lawful evil as, as a base. Uh, and the signifiers are seekers of magical power, and they're just as likely to appreciate uh, the value of imposed uh, Hell Knight orders, and they augment their ranks with skills of spellcasters instead. So it's really an interesting storyline that, that I think I'm going to play around with a little bit more in the future as a GM. Uh, and then you have an academy performer, so basically a student. Knight of Ozum, uh, Nagambi Arcanist, Mammoth Rider, which is kind of neat. There's a good bit of background information on it, but uh, you know, it's a it's a barbarian and a druid character, which is really kind of an interesting twist on things. I've never thought of joining the two. Uh, we have the Molthonic Commander, the Mushven's Kabbalists, Kabbalists, the Marian Ascetics. Oh, the Old One Cultist. So just how can you pass on an Old One Cultist, right? Uh, you know, you've got basically a human oracle, 10th level, and it goes through everything, like all the spells that they would prepare, uh, the base stats, skills, languages, and special abilities. Uh, stoic. Cultist gains a plus one bonus on all saving throws against fear attacks. If, successfully, if she successfully saves against any fear effect, she is immune to further fear effects from that source for 24 hours. I think that's a pretty interesting set, you know, in Old Ones. I thought of Old Ones in the last uh, bestiary, and you've got, you know, the Cthulhu-esque Old Ones and, and all of those interesting things. So it, it's really a, a storyline that's starting to evolve, so I thought I would share it, and I like the concept. Uh, and then you have the Chronicler, Pathfinder Adventure Captains, Prophets of Calstrad, Pure Legionnaire, which is an interesting concept in all of itself. Of course, you've got the Red Manus, which is a pretty popular uh, genre, for lack of a better way to say it, or a pretty popular theme within the realm of Galarian, at least in the circles I've run in. Uh, people talk about them like they're iconic legends. And then you've got the Initiate for the Red Manus. You've got... Uh, a thief and oh, shield marshal is kind of an inter interesting concept. Uh, he could be fun as an NPC or somebody to throw in to mess with your party a little bit. And then you've got the silent enforcer, which I thought was the actually the sisters of Golden Aranis are also interesting. Uh, they're they're a monk order, but both of these but both of these monk orders are pretty interesting. And then you have a skin salt cultist, which is kind of a gruesome, gruesome, gruesome. 
mix of uh, story. And the Sleepless Detective is just kind of cool in his own own right. You have a Thrun agent and a Sodom Avenger. You have a Usaro rebel and uh, a usage Kabbalist. 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 I know it's a Cabal. Oh, the Usquid Druid. Uh, I thought this was a very interesting concept. I have never in my, I don't know, 25 years of role playing, I have never ever seen a player play a non neutral, non true neutral druid. So I thought the concept, the whole concept behind this elf druid that is neutral evil was a very interesting concept. And if you look at the picture, I would never ever think that was a druid. I would kind of lean that being towards much more of a necromancer than anything. This to me looks like some kind of skull, not tree bark, until I, I think of druid. Same thing here. This <coughs> this doesn't remind me of wood. It reminds me of a skeleton. But if you look at it closely in the picture, you can kind of see there's wood grains in it. Uh, and that sword, just old, decrepit, but then you got the wood handle on it, and it, it all kind of comes together. Uh, they did a real good job with the concept on the art and approving it. I, I'm really impressed. Oh, and one very cool thing is, you know, the Duskwood, the Duskwood, the Uskwood Druid gets a Dire Bat companion, and they, they list the rules for the Dire Bat, which I found to be very interesting. And then, uh, well, that's really it. And the, you know, obviously on the back side, they've got, they've got the, the cool art uh, that's on the cover again. Uh, so, what are my thoughts on this book? Well, if you're a GM, it's a great tool. It's something that you know, when you need a chance encounter, you can just pull off the shelf, just like the other NPC codex, and run with it. Or it's something you can build an entire series of adventures around, just throwing in things and mature them as your party grows. Um, if you're a player and you really, really want to play one of these characters, it's a great starting point. Uh, they've done all the work for you. You don't have to think it out, which has always been uh, a drawback for some players when they want to come up with something that's been in a storyline in the past. And you're like, oh, how do I make this work so it fits the, the fluff that's actually in the fiction? In that sense, it's a really good tool. Uh, the characters in it are unique enough that it, it's worth the money, especially if you're into pulling from the fiction and putting it into your storyline in your campaigns. Thanks for watching. This is Matt Lemke with Through Gamer Goggles. If you're watching this on our blog and you want to follow us, please click on any of the social media links on the right-hand side of your screen. If you're just watching on YouTube, feel free to subscribe and keep in touch with us and you'll know how, how we're doing. You'll, if you subscribe to Twitter or to Facebook, when we're at shows and conventions, You'll get updates of what we're doing there. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.